welcome to the first video and hopefully a long series discussing rat genetics and more. Shameless plug, but this video is from Blooming Tales Rattery. The Facebook page and website are going to be linked down below. This video will be dis discussing basic genetic terms that are super important in order to understand more complicated genetic topics down the line. If you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments and I'll answer them. Or if you have any topics or anything else you want to learn about, let me know those too. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in because I think this video is going to be a little long. So our first vocab word that we're going to talk about is chromosome. So what's a chromosome? By definition, it's a thread of protein that carries genetic information. But what does this actually mean? So a chromosome is your base for the bulk of all of your genetic information. Okay, right here we have a little X chromosome. And rats have 21 pairs of chromosomes and receive one half of each of those pairs from each parent. That means mom gave a chromosome and dad gave a chromosome for each pair. When we're looking at a chromosome in easy to understand terms, think of it like a car. It's the heaviest part that's holding all of the bits and pieces together. So this right here is our car. The next term that we're going to look at is locus, which is somewhat interchangeable with gene. Um, we'll get to why later, um, but a locus is simply a specific point on a chromosome. There's tons of loci and each loci handle one specific type of gene or allele. Um, and this means there's a locus for chocolate fur, a locus for Russian blue fur, jumbo ears, hairless, red eyes, pink eyes, markings, etc. But they will always be found on the same point on a chromosome, animal to animal. The spot for that locus is not going to change ever. And the best way we can think of this is they're like cup holders in a car. Okay, so our chromosome is our car, our locus are our cup holders. Our next term is gene, and this is where it can get a little complicated. A gene can be referring to both a locus and an allele. Any given type of gene will always reside on the same spot on the chromosome, which is why gene and locus can be interchangeable. Locus is just kind of considered the more general term for it, and is the term that you will hear the most in the rat fancy. But a gene can also be referring to the genetic material that's found inside of the locus. So our next term is allele, which is a variant or the mutation of a gene. So rats are diploids, just like humans. And this means that each locus only has two spots for alleles or genes, just like the cup holders in your car. So when is it a gene and when is it an allele? Well, simply put, a gene is the same and alleles are different. So here we have a gene because they are the same. But if it looked like this, they would be an allele because they are different. But we can think of it like the cups that go into our cup holders. If we have two Route 44s from Sonic, then they're genes. But if we have a Route 44 from Sonic and a large drink from McDonald's, they're alleles because the McDonald's drink is a mutated version of that gene. It is different. Sometimes you'll hear the phrase wild type, and that is just referring to the non-mutated form of that gene. Does this necessarily matter to us, the difference between a gene or an allele? Not really, but it's kind of nice to know. So our chromosome is our base, it's our car. Loci or genes are our cup holders, and then allele and genes are our cups. Hopefully that makes sense, and if it doesn't, feel free to ask some questions. The next word that we're going to be talking about is heterozygous. And it has everything to do with alleles. If you understand how to break up language, you'll know that hetero means different. This word means that on a locus, the two alleles that are sitting in our cup holders are different. So for example, if we have an agouti rat carrying black, which is written like this, this is a heterozygous agouti. Agouti is a dominant allele, which is referenced here by the capital A, and it's het because the second allele in this locus 
is the lowercase a, which references black, which is a recessive dilute. So heterozygous means different. By that logic, I'm pretty sure you can infer what homozygous means, but I'll explain it anyway. Homo means same. So a locus is homozygous when the two alleles, or genes, as we learned, are the same. So if we have our goody rat here, who instead has two copies of the dominant agouti allele. This is a homozygous agouti. Homo means same. Phenotype is our next vocab word, and it's super simple to understand. A phenotype is what we see with our eyes. If we're looking at our agouti rat, we can tell that the phenotype is agouti because we can see it. You'll also sometimes hear this referred to as what the animal expresses, and this is usually used in terms with dominant genes, not so much with recessives. Now, genotype is what is in its genes. This is not only about what we can see, but also what kind of alleles are lurking down in there. So if we look at our agouti rat again, her genotype is agouti carrying black and blue, which is referenced by this little lowercase g right here. Don't worry, we'll get to how to write and read this kind of stuff in the next video. So she physically just looks a goody, right? That's her phenotype. But her genotype is what we can't always see, which in this case is a goody carrying black, carrying blue. You'll sometimes hear it referred to as het a goody or het blue which just means that they're carrying something, but that's mostly found in the reptile community. Um, you might be wondering, why does this uppercase G not have anything to do with it? Well, this part, par wow, words just got really hard. This particular locus is recessive, which means this capital letter means that that mutated gene isn't found there. So it has absolutely nothing to do with it at all. You'll sometimes, in this case, hear unexpressed, um, but that's a term for a dominant gene that cannot be phenotypically seen, but is present in the genotype. So phenotype is what we see, and genotype is in the genes. On to page two, and this is where we're going to talk about the different types of dominant genes and what recessive means. We're gonna start with recessive because it is the easiest to understand. A recessive gene is when a locus needs two copies of the same gene in order for it to express, or for us to see its phenotype. If we look at our agouti rat again, we know she is het agouti. This means that she has one copy of the dominant agouti allele and one copy of the recessive black allele. Since she only has one copy of that recessive black allele, we cannot see the black, right? She is not a black rat. But what happens if she has two copies of the recessive black allele? Well, since she now has two copies of this gene, she would be phenotypically black and genotypically black. So pretty simple. Our next term is going to be codominant. A codominant allele is an allele that will express equally with another codominant allele. So for example, a white flower and a red flower will create a white and red flower, not a pink flower. They don't mix like that. You will see them equally. I'm not super familiar with any genes in the hobby that are codominant, but if you can think of any, be sure to let me know. Now we're going to talk about incomplete dominance. So this is where you take two dominant alleles and it creates a third outcome. So the example here, is, you know, if we take a red flower and a white flower, you get a pink flower. If you take, you know, a red flower and a blue flower, you get a purple flower. It's just like that. So an incomplete dominant is when you get two dominants and they mix and you get this different kind of visual look. The best example we have for that in rats is found in Rex rats. So when you breed a Rex to a Rex, we get D-Rex. And we all know that D-Rex usually looks nothing like its parents, right? We also see this with Rex and a Velveteen. 
they make Teddy Rex. And that third option, again, doesn't look like either parent. So complete dominance is when a dominant gene on a locust just completely covers a recessive allele and looks the same no matter if the locust is het or homo for the dominant gene. So if we look at our agouti rat again, these two animals, even though this one is het and this one is homo, is going to look exactly the same. And that's because a goody is a complete dominant. A hypostatic dominant is when a dominant gene requires another specific set of genes to be found on an animal in order for that hypostatic dominant to express. Now I know that's a whole lot of words that probably don't make a lot of sense, but bear with me and I'll explain it a little bit more. For example, both Pearl and Merle in rats require that rat to be homozygous mink. This means that the mink locus needs two copies of that recessive mink gene in order for us to visually see the dominant Pearl and Merle. Okay, so a dominant gene that cannot be expressed. So if we had an animal that was Pearl, but it was not a mink animal, that Pearl is going to be unexpressed. It's not going to be carried. Carried is a term for recessives only. Okay, guys, dominance cannot be carried no matter what. So next up is lethal dominance. They're also known as homo lethal. So from earlier in the video, we know that homo means same. So if we break this down, this means that when an animal has two of the same dominant alleles on a locus, it is lethal. So only certain dominant alleles are homo lethal. And this happens when each parent passes down this dominant allele and the resulting offspring is absorbed in the womb. They generally don't even make it to birth. And if they do, they're pretty much always stillborn. On to page three and our final page. And we're going to start off with the term back cross. So this is a term that is specifically talking about breeding the offspring back to a parent. So it's either mother to son or father to daughter. So pretty straightforward. Inbreeding is when you take a direct family member to another. So sibling to sibling, mother to son, daughter to father. Some back crosses are inbreeding, but not all inbreeding is a back cross. So sibling to sibling is not going to be considered a back cross, but it is inbreeding. Now, finally, we have line breeding. And this is a breeding method where you pair distant family members together. So instead of doing direct family, ah, we're going to do, you know, a grand granddaughter to grandpa or cousin to cousin or you know, uncle to niece, all of those are considered line breeding. And all of these methods are perfectly ethical in rat breeding and are some of the best tools that we have to create a standard, even tempered rat. So that's it for the basic vocab video. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you liked it. This is kind of my first stab at doing anything like this. So you have any kind of constructive criticism, please let me know. Um, the next video is going to explain how to write out the genetic code, kind of what you saw out there when we were talking about our agouti rat and what all of those pesky letters actually mean.